Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com. Today I'm going to show you how to split a branch from your family tree to create a separate new tree from that branch. Your family tree could be on Ancestry.com, MyHeritage or another online site. This here is an example of Ancestry.com and Ancestry doesn't offer an online feature for splitting or copying a branch of your tree. So I'm going to walk through step by step how to do that using free software. So what I want to do is I'm just going to scroll over to the left of this particular section of my tree. I'll just zoom in and I'm going to get to this particular lady here. Anne has many children, her children have many children, and I would like to take this branch for Anne and everything below her and put it into a separate family tree. I have an article on a website, a tutorial, that steps you through how to do this using two different ways, two different pieces of software. I'm going to give you a visual walkthrough. In terms of free software, you can use Family Tree Builder from MyHeritage. I like Family Tree Builder. This is it here. But increasingly, I find its interface getting a little bit frustrating. It's quite old school, this interface. It's kind of fixed in size. I can't make this bigger despite having a large monitor. Although you can do it. If you're used to it, just follow the steps in this section. Instead, I am going to use Roots Magic. So the first thing to do is to download a full copy of your JetCom file because you're going to do the split on that JetCom file instead of on your ancestry tree. A JetCom file is simply a copy of your tree in a format that lets you move that tree, copy that tree from one piece of software to another. In this case, the software is Ancestry.com. We're going to download a JetCom and load that into the Roots Magic software. To download your JetCom file, just go to the tree settings. Tree settings. This is what we want to have. Download your JetCom file. Click the button and and there we have a little done message. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, which is where all web browser downloads go to. Just downloads here. And this is what I've just downloaded, this relatively large JetCom file. That's the full copy of your tree. The next thing I want to do is install RootsMagic 9, the free version. I'll put a link in the article to the download page. Here I am, the download page. This is Roots Magic 9 I want to work with, which is the latest. Just click on download here. Gives me a few choices and I will click on the 64 bit. Now I can't remember with Roots Magic 8 if there was a separate download for the free version, but with Roots Magic 9, you just download the full version and then a lot of it is grayed out or disabled until you pay to upgrade but we don't need to pay to upgrade to use the feature that lets us split us a family tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this installer here. It will also go into my downloads folder. Here it is, Roots Magic 9 setup. I'm gonna double click and run that. Do I want to allow it to make changes to my device? Yes, I do. This is the license agreement, I accept it. I will take the default install folder, take the default name for the start menu. I would like a desktop shortcut and I click install. This shouldn't take too long. Okay, it's about to finish and it will also launch when it finishes. That's what I want. At this point, it brings me to a welcome screen and it's saying, do you want to run the full registered version, which you would go ahead and pay? Or do you want to run Essentials, the free version? This is what I want. Taking a bit of time to launch and up comes the welcome screen. Now what I want to do is import that JetCom file. So here in this list, I want to click on import file, import file from another program that opens this screen. And this gives me various options, including the one I want, which is JetCom. I'm going to click on that. Now it asks me what file I want to import down here. It's just looking for all files with the suffix of .ged on your machine. And then it goes looking for them. That's if you use, if you have a lot of JetComs like I have, that's not particularly useful. 
but I'm going to go and find the one that I downloaded, which is here. And I'll double click that. The next thing it's asking me is where do you want to put it? This doesn't really matter, but I'm going to browse for destination and I will, at this point, you might want to create a custom folder for your Roots Magic trees. I guess I can do that. I'll create this custom folder called RM Tree, and that's where I'll stick it. Click Save. I don't particularly want to enable web hints here, so I'm just going to take that off. It's enabled by default. And now I'm going to click OK. So it's doing some prep. This is source information, annotated information that you might want to put in if somebody sent you the file. It's your cousin Betty or your Auntie Mary. I leave the default that I don't want to add additional info to this and I'll just click OK. And as you can see, it's importing people, families, events. The next thing I want to do is I want to find the top of the branch that I want to split. In order to do that, I'm going to search the person at the top of the branch that I want to split. That was Anne Collins. You may want to use this box over here, this, this search feature, but it actually doesn't work in the free version. It only works in the paid version. So instead, you need to find the index or the person list, which can be a little bit confusing because it can get a bit hidden. But here I'm on the people, this people tab. And there's a little hidden window to the left. So I'm just going to expand this by dragging to the right. And you can see it's just dragged a few columns over here. This is the index or a list of everybody in your tree. And it's starting with the blank names where I don't have the surnames, which is unfortunately, it happens to be women where I don't know their maiden name. So I'm just going to search for Collins, don't put in the full name, just put in the surname. Click enter and now I get all the columns and Anne happens to be at the top. If you wanted to actually search for Anne herself, you could do Collins comma Anne. But Anne, if you search for Anne Collins, it won't find anything because it's Collins comma Anne, right? The lady that I want is this one here, born 1843. So I just want to find her in my tree. So I just double clicked there. And you can see it just jumped to Anne with her parents. Then beneath her, just clicked on that. It's showing there's Anne here. That's her spouse, one of her children. And she has you know, multiple children. I want all the branches from Anne down. So now that we know that she's there in our full tree, we want to export herself and the section of the tree below her. Now, technically, we didn't actually need to find her at this point because you can't right click and hit export. So just follow these steps. We want to go to the export dialog or the export wizard. So we go to file which is the over here on the left strip here, this menu file. We want to export data. We want to export to a JETCOM file. We're going to browse for the destination where that .gd is going to be put. And this time we're going to call it split or whatever you want to call it, but I'm going to call it split and Collins and just for tidiness I'll stick it into this folder click Save and now it's asking me for the export options and this is the key this is where you choose what section of the tree that you want to export if you chose to export the full tree if you leave all these defaults well you're just going to get a copy of the JetCom that you imported right so instead, we're going to tell Roots Magic what section to export. So instead of choosing everyone, I'm going to choose select from list. And this list is going to look pretty familiar because it's quite similar to the person list we were looking for already. Once again, I'm going to find Anne, just put in Collins for me. And at this point, it's not as clever because it's actually just giving me the C's here, starting with 
So I'm just going to scroll down and there is the particular Anne that I want. That Anne is the one I don't want. So Anne Collins, I'm going to select her. The next step, having selected her, is to mark that selection. And now you get multiple options of what you want to export. Everyone in the highlighted person's tree seems uh, promising, but that just brings you the entire tree. What I want is the descendants of the highlighted person. So I'm going to click descendants. And now I get several more options. I can take the direct descendants only, descendants and spouses, and descendants and collateral lines. And if you're like me, you are not sure what collateral lines means. Well, collateral lines means that you will take Anne's children, great-grandchildren, etc. You will also take their spouse and branches attached to their spouse. So just to illustrate what that means a bit more clearly, I'm going to go back to my ancestry tree and here is Anne. Now, normally, I do not put in collateral lines. So, for example, if we take Anne, who's married to Andrew, her eldest son is Edward. I'll just increase this a little bit. Edward's son is Edward, and Edward is married to this lady, Mary Ann Cahill. So Edward is my genetic line. Beneath here are my genetic relatives. I wouldn't normally put in the parents, siblings, etc. of the spouses, but to show an example of what happens, what the difference is with the collateral line, I'm just going to expand the family tree of Mary Ann Cahill. Normally, I wouldn't have anybody other than her children, but I have added a father. I called it Test Case Cahill, that if I choose to download the collateral lines, this particular individual, the parent, will come down. If I only take spouses, then this individual will not be brought down. Hope that's clear. So going back to the options here, direct descendants only would not take the spouse, would take his children. Descendants and their spouses, normally what I want, and I very rarely would want the collateral lines. So I'm going to choose descendants and spouses. And I am going to click OK. If you want to up the ten, up the number of generations, you could. Uh, I don't have 10 generations beneath uh, at that level. So now I'm going to click OK. And what that has done, just by clicking OK, nothing's happened other than if I scroll down, you see a lot of check marks here to the left. That is because the descendants and spouses of Anne Collins have now been marked in the tree. So I've done that. I now, having chosen those options, I now click select. And it's selecting from that list of checked people. At this point, you can choose a few things. You can choose to privatize living people. You can do things like remove notes, remove sources, addresses. I tend to leave these defaults here and just click OK. And a little box appeared down at the bottom of my screen off this particular monitor saying processing and then it disappeared. And we're just back to the Roots Magic screen. But what's happened behind the scenes is that a file has been created. Let's go and look in that folder. And now I have a, another file. In this case, it's called split. And columns. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load that file into Ancestry.com as a private tree. So go back to Ancestry, go to Trees, Create and Manage Trees. Scroll down here, upload a JEDCOM file. Choose the file. There's my split and columns.gd file. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to make it public because this is a tree I'm working on. It's a research tree. Except click upload. And let's see what we see. Taking a little bit of time and it's finished uploading. I'm going to jump straight to it. 
And here you see Anne, her husband, her children, her grandchildren. I'll just scroll over to the left. And the key, one of the key things here is you see I have Edward, direct line of Anne, Edward's spouse, Mary Ann Cahill. What I don't have is Mary Ann Cahill's father. Because I didn't choose collateral lines for that export, it didn't bring in her father. And that's it. That's the split. That is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Free version of Roots Magic. A few clicks. You have to wait a little bit for things to process. But it really is quite simple. A nice piece of software. Hope you can follow all that. Split away. And the best of luck with your family research.